In this video, we're going to see how we use this, the normal distribution function in Excel, which is the norm dist function. So the norm dist function, it is going to be used anytime we're working with a normal distribution and we're trying to find the probability. And the way we use this in Excel is we'll use equals norm dist, we'll put in our point that we're interested in, tell it the value of the mean and the standard deviation, and then we always put true for the norm dist function because we're always working with these as cumulative functions. So we want the total area, not just a single point. And this norm dist function is going to return the area to the left of that point. So whenever we put something into norm dist, it's going to tell us the area to the left of that point on the normal distribution, and then we can work with it as we need to. So let's look at some examples. Thermometers temperatures at freezing are normally distributed with a mean temperature of zero degrees Celsius and a standard deviation of one degree Celsius. Now this is telling us a lot. It tells us that it's normally distributed, which is good. We need it to be normally distributed in order to use the techniques of this chapter. And then it also tells us that our mean is equal to zero and our standard deviation is equal to one. So anytime we have a mean of zero and a standard deviation one, it's better than just being normally distributed. This is the standard normal distribution. So the standard normal distribution is anytime we're working with a normal distribution where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one, and we're going to use the special letter Z anytime we're working with the standard normal distribution. For generic distributions, we use the random variable X, but for standard normal, we use Z because it's special. All right, so let's see how we do this. Find the probability a randomly selected thermometer has a temperature below negative one degrees Celsius at freezing. So we write this as the probability that our value Z is less than negative one. If you visualize the standard normal distribution on a curve, it's a bell curve, you mark negative one. If we're looking for the probability we're below negative one, that is going to be the area to the left shaded in on the graph. So since we're looking for the area to the left, we can just plug into our norm dist function. We're looking for below negative one, mean is zero, standard deviation is one, and then we always put true. And so this tells us the probability a thermometer has a temperature below negative one is equal to 0.1587, rounded to four decimal places. Okay. Let's look at the next one. It says find the probability a randomly selected thermometer has a temperature above 0.75 degrees. Well, we're looking for above, so that means Z is going to be greater than 0.75. And the challenge here is if we put 0.75 into norm dist, it's going to give us the area below it, or the area to the left, which isn't what we want. But if we keep in mind that the total area under the curve is one, we can use the complement rule and say that the area to the right is equal to one minus the area to the left, and we can find the area to the left using norm dist of 0.75 comma zero, comma one, comma true. So to find the area to the right, we have to do one minus area to the left, since the total area under the curve is one, and norm dist always gives us the area to the left of the point. So the probability a thermometer has a temperature greater than 0.75 is 0 0.2266. Then the last one on this sheet, it says find the probability a randomly selected thermometer has a temperature between negative 0.25 and 0.25. So we're going to say that Z is between negative 0.25 and 0.25. And the way we find this is if we put in norm dist of 0.25 comma 0 comma 1 comma true, that's going to give us the total area to the left of 0.25. And then if we were to put in norm dist of negative 0.25, that gives us the area to the left of negative 0.25 that we don't want in there. So we're going to do norm dist of 0.25, norm dist of the big one, minus norm dist of the little one, saying subtract off the area below negative 0.25 because we don't want to include it, we just want what's in between them. So we'll do norm dist of 0.25 minus norm dist of negative 0.25, and we get the area between those points to be 0.9. 1974. Okay, let's look at another example. So the mean weight of a one year old girl is normally distributed. So we know it's normally distributed. It's important. 
with a mean weight of 20.4 pounds and a standard deviation of 0.5 pounds. So this one is not standard normal because our mean is not zero and our standard deviation is not one. But it's fine, we can work with it using the same normdist function. So first one, we want to find the probability a one-year-old girl weighs more than 22 pounds. So we're gonna write that as the probability x is greater than 22. And we switch back to x because we're no longer working with the standard normal curve. We use z for standard normal, x for everything else. So for this one, we're looking for above 22. But we know if we put norm or if we put 22 into the norm dist function, it gives us the area below it. So this is the area above. We've got to do complement rule. One minus the area below it, or one minus the area to the left, gives us the area to the right or the area above it. So this will be one minus norm dist of 22. That's the point we're interested in. 20.4 because that's our mean. 0.5 our standard deviation, and then true. So the probability a one-year-old girl weighs more than 22 pounds is very small, 0. 0.0007, rounded to four decimal places. The next one, find the probability a one-year-old girl weighs between 20 and 21 pounds. This time we want our random variable to be between 20 and 21. So to find the area between, we do norm dist of the big one, so norm dist of 21 comma the mean, comma the standard deviation, comma true, minus norm dist of the little, so norm dist of 20, comma the mean, comma the standard deviation, comma true. And this will give us the area between, so the probability a one-year-old girl weighs between 20 and 21 pounds is 0 0.6731, rounded to four decimals. And the last one is the probability a one-year-old girl weighs less than 21 pounds. Well, less than is the area to the left. These are the nice ones because we can plug them straight into norm dist. So we'll do norm dist of 21 comma the mean comma the standard deviation comma true. And so the probability a one-year-old girl weighs less than 21 pounds is 0 0.8849.